Everybody, welcome to another, another, another one. Another one. Another episode. Shout out to DJ Khaled. <laughs> uh, episode of Marriage Matters. This is a podcast where we talk about marriage matters mm-hmm. because marriage, marriage matters. matters. So my name is Glenn Coleman, and I'm joined as always by my beautiful, lovely, adoring, delicate flower of a wife. My name is Tanya Coleman, and uh, we just want to welcome you. Welcome you to today's show. Yes. Um, we're going to get right into it. Well, I always like to ask you, how you doing? Let me stop. Let me slow down. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. You know, it's, just, uh, it's hot today. Yeah, it is. It is hot. Yeah, we sat outside for a little bit, but a little bit in. is all you can take. I'm going to get it. I told Tanya I want to get one of those porter cools to put on the back patio because it's just, you know, it's hot. Anyway. It's a little warm. So today I wanted to talk about triggers. Mm. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about trigger. No. I'm talking about don't do that. Oh, don't do that. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm talking about the things that push your buttons. Right. Um, and we kind of talked about this a little bit last week, but I just want to kind of maybe for me dive a little deeper into mm-hmm. this. And as I was thinking about this, uh, thinking about triggers, I thought about this this um, I had a friend of mine I used to work with. One of his friends, so a friend of my friend, a uh, friend of a friend, a friend of a friend, a friend twice removed, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, he had um, this dog. Okay, and this dog, <laughs> he had an electric fence, an invisible fence. Okay, I've heard of those. Okay, so yeah, it's like a it's like a barrier in your yard, mm-hmm. and you 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 put your this collar on your dog, and mm-hmm. the dog gets close to that barrier. Right, it shocks the dog. Yeah. And it's supposed to keep the dog in the yard. In the barrier, yeah. Well, this dog, when he would approach the barrier, it would shock him. He would take off running straight oh, and cross over. It worked the wrong way. And so when the, he would come <laughs> home, the dog would be outside on the street just waiting there, waiting for him to get home to turn, to turn, it, off. To turn it off. Wow. So... Uh, yeah. And I thought about it. Like, I know you're saying, what does that have to do with triggers? Mm-hmm. So what it has to do with it is when you are triggered, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Fight or flight, right? There you go. Do okay. you do you immediately run away from that? Do you mm-hmm. push it back down? Mm-hmm. Do you, you you walk away and just, I don't want to deal with it or mm-hmm. I don't want to be triggered. I don't like being triggered. Mm-hmm. Are you running away? Are you are you coming back to the problem? Are you you going to that edge and then and then going back and examining that? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of mm-hmm. you know what I what I want to talk about today. So a lot of times when we are triggered, you know mm-hmm. that that um, built in human programming kicks in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember bi- uh, biology two twenty five, flight or fight. Mm-hmm. You know, flight or fight, or so, freeze. There's another or one. freeze. Mm-hmm. So the three F's, right? Mm-hmm. Fight, flight, or freeze. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you do? So that I, just, I don't want to kind of get into that today. Okay, trigger um, is really be, has really become a popular word, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have to be conscious and aware not to, I guess. Um, overuse it, you know, because mm-hmm. people say that they're, oh, that triggered me or that triggered me. You know, I, I stomped my toe and that triggered me, you know, that kind of thing. And so do, not lo- using the term loosely, mm-hmm. um, but being sure that we understand that a trigger is, it's like you said, a switch, you know, that's flipped on the inside. And the reason why that switch is able to be flipped, why people can become triggered is because of a past, usually a past experience that they have that is unresolved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what what I always say is, you know, when, when you have a man, when you have two people coming together, Mm -hmm. that's two Totally different backgrounds. We were raised different. Different things were, um, you know, we always tease our girls, but it's true. And we tell them, you know, we apologize for any damage that you're going to have to undo later on in life Mm -hmm. because of us. (laughs) You know, but it's true that Mm -hmm. we all come to into relationships with with baggage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that for one one reason or another could create some buttons or some triggers that could cause us to 
um, react in a certain way. Right. And but what I'm saying today is, um, you know, a lot of times I know for me, when I would be triggered, mm-hmm. my, the way I dealt with that was I just didn't want to. I didn't deal with it. Mm-hmm. I, I walked away from. Mm-hmm. I was like the dog. I took off running the other way, mm-hmm. and I did not want to be in that. I didn't like the way that Coming felt. Coming back into that space. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Li- I didn't like the way. I didn't like the emotions that came along mm-hmm. with it. And my my way of dealing with um, those triggers was just to ignore them. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that we talked about this before on the show. Um, you know, we always used to say, and still to this day, we we haven't had like a just argument, like a screaming, shouting. Right. You know, but we would always say, you know, um, we don't argue, we don't argue. Mm -hmm. But I think what we found out was after a few years was the reason why we were, we don't argue was because we don't, we were not addressing the things that really, instead of the things that really triggered us and we kind of, we're kind of both built that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, um, instead of dealing with those and bringing those out and talking about them and working through them, we often you know, walked away from right. them and pushed Avoid them it. down. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that in and of itself caused more, mm-hmm. uh, more issues. So, so what do you do when, when you're triggered? Do you, do you fight? Do you, do you go into flight or do you freeze? Mm-hmm. Um, and like I said, you know, I think a lot of times with the flight is that you just don't want to deal with, mm-hmm. with those emotions. Mm-hmm. It's uncomfortable. You know, um, I've, I've talked with people, I've coached with people um, where when you start talking about a certain thing, you can almost see it in their body language, mm-hmm. how they begin to shift and mm-hmm. and it, it changes the, their eyes water up. And, and it's like, I don't want to I don't want to address that. But, you know, if, if you're going to be if you're going to be whole and you're going to be become the person that your spouse or significant other needs mm-hmm. you to be. It's like those are the things that you're going to have to work through. Right. You're going to have to address them. So Mm -hmm. one of the most important things about addressing triggers is simply paying attention, Mm -hmm. being aware of yourself and paying attention when you feel an emotional response to something rather that be, you know, that, okay, I don't want to talk about this. This makes me uncomfortable. Um, this makes me angry. Um, this makes me sad, you know, whatever it is, paying attention to your emotional responses is very important. And then you need to investigate and simply investigate by asking yourself, you know, why did I respond that way Mm -hmm. and spend some time thinking about, okay, this is what happened or this is what was said. This is how that made me feel. Why did I respond that way? Mm -hmm. And doing some um, self-examination to figure out, okay, where is that feeling coming from? You know, um, I think, excuse me, we don't spend enough time with ourselves. You know what I mean? Um, With investigating your own self and personality and emotions and things that that move you. we're, we're so busy, 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 busy and trying to move from one thing to the next. And even in uncomfortable situations, um, you may not say anything. You may run away. You may shut down. Um, but then when that moment is over, you tuck it away and you move on with the rest of your day mm-hmm. instead of stopping to really sit with that mm-hmm. and, and deal with that. So I think a part of it is taking the time to figure out why did I respond in the way that I responded? Mm-hmm. So, so, so that was the first response to mm-hmm. to triggers is the the, the flight, right? Um, so, fight is you know you get defensive, mm-hmm. you know you want to argue, you um, you get combative. Mm-hmm. So, whenever you're triggered, whenever somebody uh, press pushes that button that was formed there by something in your past mm-hmm. or you know your personality trait or whatever you want to call it, then you become very defensive. So, um, so, so the, the flight is, is not the best way in my opinion to, to deal with triggers Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, because the issue never gets resolved. Correct. Mm -hmm. The fight Mm -hmm. is also not a, a a great way (laughs) to deal with it either. Um, uh, 
So what what are your thoughts and, on that, Dr. Coleman? <laughs> and and I'm going to receive that, Dr. Coleman. Let me not be like Sarah and laugh, okay? I receive <laughs> that. Um, but I agree. Fight is not um, the correct way to respond either because usually you're fighting because you are avoiding dealing with the thing that needs to be dealt with, again, just like with flight. So your response is combative or, you know, I've literally heard some people say, I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not. And so they go into this combative um, mode and defensive mode and they are basically beginning to stonewall you and don't want to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, And so again, nothing gets resolved. Yeah. You you know what? I just got a revelation. What's that? Is that oftentimes fight, I mean, flight leads to fight. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we've all been in those situations in our relationships to where something is, you know, you, some, your, your, your spouse or your significant other, what have you, they've done, they've done something mm-hmm. or they've done a series of things and you flight, you, you avoid it, you, you don't mm-hmm. say anything. When you should say something, you should speak up and you never do. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden... They, they trigger you again. And sometimes it's like something small, like mm-hmm. they left their shoes, mm-hmm. you know, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the living room in front of the sofa. Mm-hmm. And then you go off mm-hmm. and it's just like this big blow up. Mm-hmm. And you're like, golly, over right. some shoes. Right. But it wasn't about the no, shoes. The shoes were the trigger. The shoes were the trigger. Mm-hmm. And so again, um, the, the fight, I mean, the flight sometimes can lead Sure, because you've never again Cause, cause addressed, you've never it. addressed it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so you we have to, and that's where we always go back to vulnerability. Mm-hmm. We always go back to talking about everything often. And I, you know, know that sometimes it is difficult to have hard conversations. It's difficult to talk about the things that make you uncomfortable or you feel like they may make my spouse uncomfortable, but we have to discuss those things. I mean, how are we going to be one, going to be husband and wife in this lifelong partnership, this lifelong relationship and not be able to talk about everything. Yeah. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't make any sense. That that doesn't add up. You know, you're not going to have, um, your best marriage. You're not going to have your best, um, intimate, um, psychological, romantic, emotional relationship um, with your partner, if you can't talk about things yeah. with them, yeah. which leads us, I think, to our third one. And you mm-hmm. said, so we had, we talked about the the flight. We talked about the fight, and you said the freeze. freeze. So, kind of talk to us about what is that? So, what is freeze that like? is typically freeze happens when fear steps in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you have the person that that runs off because they're refusing to talk about it. It's too hurtful. It's too harmful. Maybe it makes them angry. Then you have the person who they are angry. And so then they begin to fight um, back with, you know, in that situation when they're triggered. And then you have the person who freezes when they are triggered. And that is typically when because fear has stepped in. I don't know how to respond to this. This hurt me so deeply that I have no words for it. You know, um, I don't have the emotional capacity to even address this right now because I'm too afraid of where it's going to take us, Mm -hmm. you know, down the road. And so, um, one thought comes to mind, um, where we've seen it in movies where, and I know it's a movie, but it is reality for some people where maybe they um, realize that their spouse is having an extramarital affair, you know, and instead of them addressing it in the, you know, when they find out about it, they don't say anything. They completely freeze because one, I am in complete shock. I can't even believe that this is happening. And they need more time to process. So you have the person who's in fear, and then you have the person who who may just be in shock, mm-hmm. and they don't know how to respond emotionally just yet. Mm-hmm. Is is that was that is that like a form of depression? You think what? It can lead to it. I okay. mean, you know the things that 
cause that response, you know, if we don't undealt with, or if we dealt, if we have had those feelings, that fear over a long period of time, it could lead to depression. Okay. It could very well lead to anxiety as well. Mm. All of those things that we okay. just talked about. So, so those, so those three things we talked about, the, the fight, flight, or freeze, mm -hmm. what we're saying is those are not the way, they're not ideal mm -hmm. for processing or, or um, yeah, well, processing through your- through, through Or your, dealing with, dealing the, with, the, with the, triggers. The, the triggers. And let me back up to the freeze part. And so when I said that sometimes you don't know how, the person doesn't know how to deal with it, so they tend to freeze and just kind of shut down, some people do need more time to process. So- you may have to give yourself permission to process it, but don't just sweep it on the, under the rug or continue to run away from it. You need to come back when you have kind of let what's happening become um, realistic to you and settle in you. You still need to make sure that you address it. Mm -hmm. I totally get when people can't um, address something in the moment because it's too shocking and they need more time to process. So I just wanted to throw that okay. in there. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break real quick to, to thank our sponsor. Yes. Goalie Nutrition. Mm -hmm. So um, Goalie is the world's first, or they have the world's first uh, apple cider, cider vinegar mm -hmm. gummy. Mm -hmm. So if you have been taking ACV, mm -hmm. I'll just say it that way. It's easier for me to say <laughs> Uh, if you've been taking it, it has so many nutritional uh, benefits. Um, it's something that I do. Uh, Tanya do, does it. And I mean, the girls never did do the apple cider vinegar no. drink. Um, but we found these chewable gummies and they taste so they taste good. They taste really good. Uh, so now you can get the amazing benefits of apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. without the not so amazing taste. <laughs> so two of these gummies equals one shot of ACV. Um, and again, like I said, guys, they are very, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Um, you could take them with you. You can, they travel well, mm -hmm. they taste great and they give you all of the benefits. Right. So, um, because, uh, goalie is one of our partners. Mm -hmm. Um, if you use our code marriage matters, you can get 5% off, matters. uh, of your order. When you go to goalie, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go goalie dot com forward slash marriage matters. That's go.goalie.com forward slash marriage matters. Use promo code marriage matters for 5% off 5 of your order. 5% off, guys. Uh, again, that's go.goli.com forward slash marriage matters for 5% off mm -hmm. of your goalie order. Yes. All right. So again, great nutritional value with the great taste. Yes, okay? the entire family loves them. <laughs> yep, so let's get back into this. So we talked about these three things of how many people respond to triggers. Mm -hmm. They fight, flight, or freeze. Mm -hmm. um, but now I just want to kind of look at triggers for what they are, mm -hmm. what I've discovered they are. And triggers okay. are indicators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Triggers are indicators. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, triggers are emotions mm -hmm. that... Um, flare up, if you will. I don't know the number that's, I can that's use. That's a great word. Yeah. When things that have been pre-programmed in you, mm -hmm. uh, or let me say it this way, triggers are indicators. Mm -hmm. When your emotions flare up because of some boundaries and borders that you have set up in your life, mm -hmm. oftentimes out of a need for safety mm -hmm. and security. Mm -hmm. And when those borders and those boundaries get crossed by others, mm -hmm. we get triggered. Mm -hmm. And so the, the thing about a trigger is, is that it, that's, you, and I said it last week, you need to understand it. And why, why am I being triggered? Sure. You know, is, is this a border or a boundary? Is, is this designed because you, you want, you said it earlier, we have to be, you know, in order to be vulnerable, there mm -hmm. cannot be any borders. There cannot be any boundaries. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to let our spouses in, we have to learn to take those down. So, um, so emotions. Mm -hmm. So the root word to emotion is what? Motion. Is motion. Mm -hmm. And your feelings, if you mm -hmm. think about it, your feelings, your emotions, mm -hmm. fear, um, insecurity, mm -hmm. uh, happy, sad, mad, and afraid. <laughs> uh, 
yeah. afraid. Yeah. Um, those things are designed to move you. Yeah. Anytime you experience any of those feelings or emotions, you get moved. Mm -hmm. Problem is, though, oftentimes, especially with the negative, the so-called negative emotions, mm -hmm. when we are afraid, when we're sad, mm -hmm. um, we allow those things to move us in a direction that's that's opposite of the direction we want to take our relationships. Sure. Yep. But what I had to learn to do is harness the power of the movement mm -hmm. because movement is movement. That's good stuff right there. Okay. So what you need to do is learn how to bridle your triggers, just like, mm -hmm. um, like you do, like you would with a horse, you mm -hmm. know, a horse is a powerful animal, yeah. right? And if he wanted to, mm -hmm. he could probably, you know, he can have his way with he you. He could have his way with you, <laughs> but you put the bridle on right. and that, that gives you control and the horse now can work for you. He can help you move things that you ordinarily couldn't move. He can right. make you move faster. Mm -hmm. So that's how we have to treat our emotions. You have to put a bridle on your emotions mm -hmm. and make them work for you. You have to allow them to, to uh, uh, allow them or allow them to pull you in the direction that you want them to go, not allow them to pull you in the direction that they want you to go. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. And so what that says to me is that I have to be aware of my emotions. I have to do some work in my emotions. You know, when I say that, like, uh, again, asking why, um, delving into that and then say, okay, well, I understand why I feel how I feel. Mm -hmm. However, this is not going to help me go into the direction that I need to go and that I want to go. So here's what we're going to do to fix that. Yeah. And then you begin to work on dealing with the things that are causing those negative emotions so that the, the emotions can change, heal, and you can recover so that you move forward in a healthy way in yeah. your marriage and in your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things that helped me to 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 walk through this process mm -hmm. was I had to realize that my spouse is not my enemy. Absolutely. And, and when I'm being triggered that she's not the problem, mm -hmm. that I am the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my. I'm not calling him the problem. I'm just agreeing with what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you, mm -hmm. yeah, you did say mm -hmm. that pretty. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that that border or that boundary that I set up, right. I set that up. Right. Based on some past history that right. happened, and it had nothing to had do nothing with, to do with yeah. Tanya, and so I had to realize that my my wife is not the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, I'll quote one of uh, Quest Green. Shout out Quest Quest Green mm -hmm. uh, um, with uh, their podcast, uh, Marriage Marriage ain't, marriage ain't for Suckers. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but he always says. You're not the problem. Your spouse is not the problem. Mm -hmm. the, the problem, problem is, is the problem. problem. You and your wife, you and your spouse need to come together and fight the problem mm -hmm. and not fight each other. That's right. Right. So I had to identify that. And so when I, when I, that was the first step for me to understand that me getting angry mm -hmm. really had nothing to do with Tanya. Mm -hmm. And so the example that I use a lot is, um, you know, I, I, Tanya, I mean, she doesn't scream at me. She's never yelled at me or raised her voice, but it's like when she would talk or when she was passionate about something, she had a way of talking and I call it the high voice. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't like for her. He's to, a musician. So he would say, your voice goes up a couple of octaves. I'm <laughs> like, what am I singing? <laughs> <laughs> but so, um, and I didn't like, I didn't like her, how that made me mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the way that made me feel. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I had to identify. I had to, and and one of the way God, the Holy Spirit had to show me, he he told me, he said, stop listening to how she's saying it mm -hmm. and listen to what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really separate that out mm -hmm. and understand that the reason why I was feeling that way, because I felt growing up that my voice wasn't heard. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and and or or no 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 let me not, let me back up. It was more I I didn't I wasn't I never spoke up for myself. Mm -hmm. Let me say it that way. Mm -hmm. I never spoke up. You for didn't myself. want to rock the boat. I never wanted to rock mm -hmm. the boat. I always I was a rule follower, and mm -hmm. I and so now in my own house, mm -hmm. you you're not going to put me in that place because mm -hmm. this is my house, mm -hmm. and you're not gonna disrespect me. Right. Right. But Tanya, she wasn't, that wasn't her intent, mm -mm. you know, and, 
And she, the other part of it is she didn't realize mm-hmm. that she was talking in the high voice. Right. And right. I think um, maybe she had some things in her childhood. And I was going to say, because probably it's so funny. Most people say they get with, they marry people that they're polar opposites of, or they're very different from. We're very similar um, because I was very sim, you know, the same way growing up where I didn't say a lot. There were a lot of things going on and um, I didn't want to make things worse per se. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was too afraid to say things. And so I kept a lot of things in and kept a lot of things to myself. And so when I, as an adult, start learning to speak out and speak up, you know, it takes a little bit more effort. And so I guess my voice goes up a little Mm -hmm. high um, when that happens. But I had to recognize and realize, um, although you were processing it the way you were processing it, I, I still too had to hear you and say, okay, this, when I speak to him in this tone or this manner, it makes him feel disrespectful. That's not, I mean, disrespected. That's not my intent. Mm -hmm. However, if it makes him feel that way, then that's something that I need to work on changing and be able to communicate what I need to say in a better way and not shut down and not communicate at all. So yeah, I think that's a beautiful example to show that how those things in your marriage or in your relationship Mm -hmm. that that you keep coming to a head in, Mm -hmm. So you both are going to have to do some work. You mm-hmm. Well, you probably both need to do some work in those Absolutely. areas. Mm-hmm. And it's not just me. So I, I could have just ran away. Mm-hmm. So let me show you what, what flight would look like. Mm-hmm. It was just say, you know what? I don't want to talk to you when you're, when you're, if you're going to talk to me that way, right. I'm not going to talk to right. you. And I'm going to just walk away. Mm-hmm. You know, or you could fight. I'm going to argue back. I'm going to raise my voice even higher. Right. And then it turns into something else. And then it else. turns into something else. Or you could just freeze. I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stonewall. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. say nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look somewhere else. And then in each one of those instances, mm-hmm. the the problem never gets it's solved. It's never resolved. Yeah. And and, it, and we 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 can never move past certain things in mm-hmm. our relationship. Mm-hmm. But when I realize and I and I say, wait a minute, I'm offended. Let me grab hold to this mm-hmm. and let's let this move me mm-hmm. into Doing the work to figure out why I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm feeling that way. Mm-hmm. To, to figure out, okay, what was it in my past? Why did I put up this wall right. here? Why did I put up this boundary mm-hmm. here to make me feel safe, to make me feel mm-hmm. okay? And when you identify that, then you can do the work. And, and you know, and, and some of that is just self-reflection. Some of that, mm-hmm. you may need to go and see a counselor or get mm-hmm. some coaching on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the, the great counselor, the Holy Spirit, yeah. can help you and help you re- and, help, and show you some things about yourself. Absolutely. Um, that, that can help you heal in some areas yeah. that will allow you to take some of those walls and those and those triggers down. And, and that's how you allow, that's how you bridle your emotions. That's yeah. how you harness that. the power of mm-hmm. emotion because it's movement. Movement is mm-hmm. movement. Mm-hmm. And so what, what we want to do, though, is take that energy and make sure we're pushing it into in the right direction. Absolutely. I love that. Brighter your emotion. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good stuff. Because here's the deal. Like I said, the, the enemy doesn't want your relationships. He doesn't want your marriage. And that's on any level, whether that's sure. husband and wife, whether that's a uh, parent to child, mm-hmm. whether that's child to parent, whether mm-hmm. that's... Um, whatever friendships Mm -hmm. so anything that he can do to go in and and if and if he knows that he'll play on that absolutely he'll he'll play on that that boundary that that emotion that trigger that you have set up in your life and 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 you'll never there will always be it will keep you out of some victories in your life Mm -hmm. so that's why it's so important that you address these triggers that you do the work and and not just ignore them like I said last week, why am I feeling this way? Why did that offend me so much? Should, should I be offended? Mm-hmm. Should I be offended that way? And it, it, once you can do that, once you can 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 do that work, I'm telling you, your relationships will grow leaps and leaps bounds. and bounds. And one key to doing that work, Glenn, I think, is making sure that you're looking more inward mm-hmm. than you are at the other person. Yeah, and this this is all inward work, right? right. And if both of you are doing the inward work. The inward work. Yes. Right. The end will work. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The end will. In the end, it will work. All mm-hmm. right. Well, on that note, we're going to shut this down. <laughs> 
<laughs> so hope you, hopefully you got something out of that. Hey guys, look, we appreciate all the follows, the shares yes. on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Keep it going, share it out. Oh, and now you can also get the uh, podcast on Apple Music and Apple Google Play. Apple Music. Um, and so Google Play. you can go Let's check go. it out there. Check us out on uh, Apple Music and Google Play. If you're watching on, if you're listening on Apple Music, please use a, leave us a review. Yeah. Um, and let us know um, how you enjoyed the podcast. Yes. Right. This has been awesome. This has been, been great. Awesome. Been I great. love the topic. Um, so. We love coming to you guys every week. And like Glenn said, we just, we appreciate the love that we are getting back. Please, all of our Facebook friends, go over to YouTube and subscribe, 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 click the bell, get the reminders. Let's get our, get, get our um, interactions on YouTube going up some. All right, so that's all we got for you today. So this is Glenn and Tanya Coleman reminding you that your marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.